Game time, long ball time, daily Capic time. How are you doing, everybody? I'm Chet Capic. We dedicate this edition of the Daily Capic to what's left of the gray matter of Chicago Bear quarterback Caleb Haney. Now, most Bear fans, the regulars will tell you, the Bears really have not had anybody legitimate back and center since Sid Luckman, and that was merely six decades ago. To which I say, what short memories we have. Who doesn't remember Ed Brown, who was an all-pro quarterback with the Bears back in 1955 and 1956? And from that perspective, the Bears won a championship with quarterback Bill Wade in 1963. Rudy Bukic was a bright lights guy for maybe 15 or 20 minutes. The Bears won a Super Bowl with Jim McMahon. Eric Kramer was uh, a beacon of light to a degree back in the 1990s. But for the most part, Chicago has been a place where quarterbacks go to die. Chicago has been a Texas federal penitentiary for quarterbacks. My gosh, remember a guy named Rusty Lish? He was so bad back in the 1980s, the big old number nine, the Danimal, Dan Hampton, threatened to throw Rusty Lish off the Bears' charter flight, and it was 35,000 feet above ground, for heaven's sakes. I ask you, is that you out there, Moses Marino? Is that you out there, Steve Stenstrom? Is that you out there, Cade McNown? Is that you out there, Will Fuhrer? Is that you out there, Henry Burris? Is that you out there, Josh McCowan, for heaven's sakes? Now that leads us to a big raw bone kid out of Kansas by the name of Bobby Douglas. I'm telling you right now, Bobby Douglas could have been an all pro in the National Football League at six different positions. There's only one problem. Quarterback wasn't one of those six positions. Now imagine this. I was in Wrigley Field back in the day when the Bears were playing the Buffalo Bills in 1970 when Bobby Douglas with a broken wrist threw a football for a touchdown 70 yards in the air. 70 yards in the air. The problem was most of the time when Bobby aimed for a wide receiver, he would throw the ball in either Lake Michigan or the Chicago River. Anyway, that leads us to a great Chicago tradition. Booing quarterbacks in Chicago is as much a part of this city as crooked aldermen, potholes, and wise guys shaking down tavern owners. In my opinion, Rahm Emanuel right now should pass legislation requiring everybody under the age of 20 to go to Soldier Field at least once just to boo a Chicago Bear quarterback. Who is everybody's favorite quarterback in Chicago? The guy who's not playing. The guy who's on the sidelines. Lovey Smith, Mike Martz, what have you been thinking about with Caleb Haney? You destroyed what could have been a marvelous season, but you have kept intact the great Chicago tradition. Three, two, one. But you have kept intact the great Chicago tradition of always booing Bears quarterbacks. Let's face it, it's good for the soul because when you get right down to it, for the most part, over the past six decades, Chicago Bears quarterbacks were never meant to be taken seriously. That's the Daily Copic. Boo! So long, everybody.